Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. I have the rest of my thrift haul that I'm going to fix up for you. This plain box has now become a piece of art and I will show you how I did it in the rest of the video. If you have any comments for me, I'd really appreciate it. I love to hear from all of you. Please like and share my channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you need any DIY or IOD products, please hop on over to thepaintedphotographer.com and I'll put the links below. I need a textured paint, so I'm going to put some old school onto a plate and a um, cap full of salt wash and mix those together. This is DIY paint is already so thick, but this salt wash helps to add some texture to your projects when you want a little bit more um, chippy look. I'm gonna take that thick paint and I'm gonna go over top of this ceramic pot. And uh, some people might like that bright, bold color, but that just wasn't my thing. I'd rather have it more muted, more concrete looking. So I put the old school on the bottom and filled in all those gaps and anywhere where the texture was on the pot, I made some more texture. And then I actually, put some on a different plate and added some beadboard to it to make it more lighter gray. And I added that to the top of the pot because I wanted it to look like it was sun washed. So the, the top of the pot was just a little bit lighter than the bottom of the pot. I had already started on my rocking horse when I had a few comments from my last video on how to fix up that hole with the heart in it. So I will try that for next time, but this time I took the IOD mold. This is a really, really old mold. It doesn't even have the micro um, thin, thin line on it. And so I just put the air dry clay in there, popped it out, and it is the perfect size to go over top of that heart. So the bottom of this rocking horse-like um, project is going to get a few IOD molds. And I just put the wood glue onto the mold and stuck it right over top of the heart and added a few more. The horse also got a coat of old school to cover up that dingy look and give him a more equestrian look. I used clear wax on the pot and on the horse to seal in that old school color. And then I took white wax. You know, I love my white wax. And I wanted that bleached kind of look on both projects. So that was the perfect thing. And this little horsey, his mane was all tied up in painter's tape. And I let that loose. And he is so cute now. Okay, here we are on that big box. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but I started out with skeleton key on the bottom and I wanted to do some type of um, like bleached look on this also where it would get lighter on the top than it would on the bottom. So I put just a significant line of skeleton key on the bottom. And then I took beadboard and I put that on the top and met those two together. I met 
up the two colors right at that line. And then I took a large paintbrush and blended those two colors together. So both colors were still wet. They have to be wet in order to do this type of blending. So if you struggle with blending, this would be a way for you to do it, is just get those two colors on in a straight line, wet, and then take a dry paintbrush and brush over top of that straight line and it blends those two colors together and makes it look like they're um, just a bleached look. At this point, I had no idea where I was going with this box, but I think I wanted transfers on it, and I do like the look of a stencil underneath a transfer. So my thought was flowered transfers. So I went ahead and I added the beadboard paint to the bottom of the stencil where the skeleton key was, and then I stenciled with skeleton key where the beadboard was. So it was just the opposite of the colors on this box using this big stencil that I had got a long time ago from Amazon. And it has a nice contrast to it. And like I said, I have no idea where I'm going with this box, but it's looking good. I purposely put this stencil not in the center of the box and I wanted it to roll over the edge. So I had to untape it from that side, hold it with my hand, flip that box over and retape it so I could get that stencil on the side of the box to line up with the front of the box. So that was a bit tricky, but it worked. stenciling was done I wanted to give it a little bit of an age look so I thought let's go to my IOD stamps and give it that crackle finish I needed to re-ink my black stamp pad so I go ahead and get my black ink and you just put it onto your stamp pad and rub it in 
Then I went over top of my crackle stamp with the black ink. And then it's called the tickle process. I just slightly tickled the stamp to give it that soft crackle look. You don't want that hard edge when you're crackling. You want a nice soft edge. So you just lay it on and gently rub on that stencil to get some variations in that crackle. I still wanted it a little bit more distressed, so I took my black ink pad and I rubbed it over top of the edges and giving it that look like you distressed it back to some dark wood that was underneath. I didn't sand this box at all. I just used this ink pad and gave it that distressed look. It worked perfectly. Now is when I did give it a little bit of sanding just to rough that stencil up a bit. And I really liked the edges with the ink pad, so I wasn't concentrating on them too much. I was more concentrating on the side and fronts of the box. After that was done, I wiped it all off and gave it a coat of Big Top. So far, this box is looking great. And at the inside, I added the DIYs Dark and Decrepit, which is a beautiful stain and uh, uh, the inside of the box is now a dark walnutty like stain and that looks perfect. Remember, I was thinking floral for this box, but this Storns and Harrison transfer is the perfect fit. It goes all the way around, and I don't have to cut it at all besides on the edges. And it's a perfect floral label for this box. For the IOD transfer, it comes with a plastic little stick and you take that and rub it over top of the transfer until it starts to let loose from the plastic backing. So this transfer is quite large. It's a lot of transferring, so get ready. You'll have a workout. After that was done, this box got a nice coat of clear wax, and then I also used the DIY black wax to age it up again. And this is layers and layers and layers of product to go on this box, and every layer it looks better and better.
The handles I had painted white. I'm not sold on that yet. Um, I took some black wax and I aged them up. I didn't want that much of a contrast on that box with the handles. So I'm still not sold on that. So make sure you watch the um, ending pictures to see if I stayed with this finish. I happened to find a scrap board and it was the perfect size to make a lid for this box to give it more of a functionality in someone's home. So it can be used as a blanket box, it can be used as a toy box, magazines, um, a coffee table. So I gave the top of this box a coat of dark and decrepit and it matches perfectly. After the dark and decrepit dried, I wanted it to have a black look like the rest of the box. So I took the DIY black, black wax and added it over top of the dark and decrepit. What that did is it put that black tone into the wood and you wanna make sure that you get it in all the wood's crevices and you're going to rub off the top of it and bring back some of that brown look. So I really scrubbed it into those creases and then took a cloth, a dry cloth, and wiped it back. Next, we're on to this oval frame. It was burgundy. I gave it a coat of its uh, DIY test paint, but this is pretty close to weathered wood. And it just covered up all of that burgundy with the weathered wood. Now for the inside, I went right over top of the words with the beadboard and covered that up. The basket just needed a new coat of white paint and it was perfect. All I did was paint it white and distressed it a bit and added some big top. Now the wording came through on this oval sign so I just put some salt wash in with my paint to give this wood blank some more texture to cover up the words that were underneath there. I decided to use the Birds, Branches, and Blossoms stamp from IOD. If you would like any of these, they are on my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. And I just used colored inks and made my design on here. So you can watch along and you'll see how I decided to do this. I left in a lot of the video so you can see my thought process and all the different colors that I used.
I didn't mind the bird in black, but I thought he needed a little color. So I added some DIY paint to the bird and I actually washed most of it off. This is a really um, thin coat of DIY paint. I added a lot of water to it. And so you can still see the black ink underneath it. Both the frame and the oval got a coat of Big Top. It's a clear sealer and it really brightened up that oval. And with the IOD ink, it does not smear. It is not, it's a water base, but it does not smear when you put the Big Top over it, which is a bonus. And I wanted it to be a little bit aged. It just wasn't I didn't like the brightness of it, so I went ahead and I took Dark and Decrepit while the big top was still kind of wet, and I went over it, but then I took a baby wipe and kind of wiped it back and aged that up a little bit. Then the frame was too dark, so I took my favorite white wax and I went over that frame. Now onto the breadboard. That was stumping me. I left it for last. So I put a coat of white swan on the breadboard and tried to get some inspiration from that. The oval recessed area was calling for one of these farm animal stamps. This is an IOD stamp that is a perfect farmhouse. I added the pig and uh, I thought, oh, I like barbecued ribs. I like anything barbecued. So how about a pig? So I put the ink on the pig, took him off of the thin mount so that I had more freedom with that, rut, that inserted area and put him on there. My IOD letters are not small enough, so I went ahead and did this on the computer and took a piece of carbon paper and laid my wording on top of the carbon paper. Took a pen, or you can use a pencil, and went over the wording, transferring it to the board.
Then I took DIY's little black dress, put it onto a clear mylar, added some water so it was thinner, so it works a little bit better to um, be have a little bit more control with lettering. And I took a small paintbrush and went ahead and traced all of my lines with some DIY paint. To make your lettering blend in a little bit more, I took my sander and went right over top. I aged up those edges. I wanted some farmhouse look to this breadboard and I went ahead and did the big top over top of everything. Be careful not to smear your letters. I had a little bit of smearing, so I knew I had to age it a little bit more. So I took my dark and decrepit and went oh, around the edges and kind of over the whole thing. I might have got a little carried away with my dark and decrepit. So let me know in the comments if you like this really distressed look. That's it for my thrift haul this time. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you give me a comment, subscribe to my channel and come back and see what I have to show you next time. Until I see you again, happy painting. Just wanna love you, just wanna hold you, just wanna be with you till we grow old. Just tell me you'll stay or take me away. I want you for myself every single day. You set my world on fire. You set my world on fire. I just want you. I just need you.